Games in this podcast range from E to M. Hi, everybody. Happy New Year. Happy 2024. Welcome back to the official Xbox podcast. First one of the year. And I'm joined by my friends, which I'm really excited about. Everyone knows, of course, Jeff Rubenstein, who's been here. I didn't know I was a friend. I've moved up to friend level. Yes, exactly. 10 episodes. Fellow podcast host and friend. And Josh Stein as well from our social team, um, who's here to join us today in initiating the first podcast episode of the year. How exciting. Thank you. Yeah, Yeah. it's exciting to ring in the new year with, with, Friends, I, I'm i not eight, weeks ten later. episodes yeah. in, but, you know, yeah. I'll get there. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, you're, you will get there. Number two, you're a repeat guest. Thank you. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. we'll have you out more often so you can talk about Hell Let Loose a little more, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, because there's been a bunch of games that released while we were all on holiday, and then games that are coming out soon that we want to talk about. Uh, but let's talk about our holidays first, because I'm sure we all played lots of video games over the break. A lot of video games, but a lot of family time. Um, this year, I was telling you earlier, this year... Last year, my wife was like, we were too lazy. We did nothing. Is that a thing? Can you be too lazy? I don't think so. Okay. You know, but Not apparently... Not a holiday break. That doesn't count. Yeah. I was outvoted. So <laughs> this year, she intentionally set up like the 12 days of Stein with like the 12 days Aww. of Christmas. So we had like something every day to do. Like a human advent calendar. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Did you like unwrap like the door every day? No, and it's just Stein it was, in there every time? It was a lot more like teenagers being angsty. The toddler want, not wanting to do anything, oh, yeah. me being tired. No, it was a lot of fun. We went to this Bavar- Bavarian right village, mm-hmm. yeah, Leavenworth, yeah. Uh, during Christmas time. So it basically looks like the North Pole. Uh, it was gorgeous. Uh, we went and saw movies. We went to dinners. We went to karaoke with our in-laws. Oh. Sang my heart oh. out. Yeah. I could go. With, depends on which. Yeah, my in-laws, Correct. maybe that could be very interesting. It, uh, I was pretty 50-50 until I hit Tenacious D and then I had a uh, <laughs> Yes. <laughs> There's always one person in the group who's like excellent at singing. That exactly. puts everyone else That's to my shame. wife. Mm-hmm. There you go. Yeah. Yep. I never go after her. I was about to say, I have to go last. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, yeah, that should be the rule. But uh, And then it just had a great time with the kids. So cool. It was great. Love it. You went on an adventure, though. Yeah. So I went to Kemerode Show. Wow. Uh, so I was in <laughs> Japan. I went to karaoke. You went to Japan. Where I did One not do karaoke, <laughs> actually, which was uh, maybe a miss on my my part. So, uh, yeah, as a family, we we were in Asia for a little while. And uh, as part of that, my my daughter was like, is it possible for us to go to Tokyo? And like we did, I was like, yeah, actually, we can fly home from Tokyo. It's it's closer than you think, actually, mm. believe it or not. And um, And I was like, well... I've been to Tokyo before, usually for work, but I've never been since I got into the Yakuza series like oh. in 2020. And so we picked a hotel that was very close to uh, that whole area, which it's, if you look, it's it's crazy because if you, we were staying in Shinjuku, which is like the busiest train station in the world. If you look at a map, like on like Google Maps or Bing Maps or whatever map you use, if you just look up and to the right, you're like, wait a sec, that is the in-game map. For the game, for the oh, for I didn't the know it was based on a real area. Oh yeah, it's called mm-hmm. Kabukicho. That's or cool. Kabukicho. I, I, it's technically pronounce... fictional, but very heavily very influenced. Real. Heavily influenced. Very real. Yeah. So the the first night we got there, we're walking through. There was like a, there was a big group of us, and they were like, "Have you been here before? Like, how do you?" Know? I was like, "Oh, we'll go to the arcade here, and then we can go over here and we can get some takoyakis." <laughs> and and they were like, "Have you been here?" And I'm like, Not "Just played way too many video games." <laughs> it is reproduced that. Well, so wow. I a, maybe we'll throw a picture in. Like, there's the arches there, the one where uh, Kiryu always starts every game, like on this street. And like, I mean, it's to the point where there's so in these Yakuza games in Kamarocho, there's like an Italian place called Cafe Alps that you just sometimes you you charge up there, you, mm-hmm. you get your health a little there, little rest and relaxation. There's really yeah, an Italian place there. Hurts. It's called Miami Gardens. You know, Miami, uh, well known for its uh, fine <laughs> Italian cuisine, uh, and, but it is in the right place. And the amount of things that were right, like the arcade where we did the crane machines, like I just felt like I was at home, mm-hmm. and cool. and I did not get into any fights. It seemed rather safe. Nothing, actually. nothing dramatic. <laughs> nothing dramatic. Granted, I. I you know, kept my eyes on the ground most of the time, but I was like on the lookout for people and just fleeing the random suits encounters and everything. Like, exactly. I was like looking, is there like a cone if I need to grab a cone or a yeah, bike and hit somebody yeah. with it? And uh, fortunately, none of those things happened. But. They knew you knew all the cafe spots and you just like up your HP every time. It wasn't worth it. That yeah. or I finally confirmed I'm an NPC. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Existential 50/50. crisis. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I, I look like I drop, uh, you know, common loot when well, I Well, you would have had a very different 
different perspective being like actually on the streets than you do in that third person view in the game. So. Yes, that's true. Uh, it was, I will say, it was really cool. And so if you, you happen to ever make your way to Tokyo and you love those games, you're in for a thrill. Yeah, you just, it, it's just like a feel like I know that, I know mm -hmm. that, I've seen that. And, and it's a testament to the folks at RGG who, yeah. and I'll be talking a little bit about their, their, their next game here uh, later in the show, but they really reproduce and capture the feel, which, Something to be said for that. That's that's makes really me wonder. I'm guessing the studio isn't right around the corner, but it makes me wonder. Like, are they like right there, or that's is that question. where they maybe just hang out? Uh, maybe yeah, maybe. It's, a, it's a pretty. It's a pretty popular. It's, nor, it? it's known as like the entertainment district. Oh, okay. okay. So it was constantly so all like hours of the night. Vibe, yeah. Very much a time. Can be very touristy. Yeah. Even Got after it. midnight, okay. there was like clearly <laughs> just never so been many Japan. people. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, put it on your space. list. I hope you make it. Amazing. Definitely. That's awesome. It's a, a great time. Yeah. Uh, did play a bunch of games, though. Yes. Which, so I, I brought my ROG Ally. At long flight, as you would imagine. And I was like, okay, I'm going to... A couple games I've been sitting on for a while. Uh, Thirsty Suitors, which was excellent. I played through that one. Really didn't realize it took place in the Pacific Northwest, so that was kind of cool. Cocoon, though. Mm -hmm. Cocoon is, is one of the games of the year, and I think it won a game award. It might have won Best Indie. So this is a, a puzzle game. Have you played it? Uh, only like an hour. Okay. Well, then you were a quarter of the way through the game. It really is only about four hours. It, it is like, it is phenomenal. I love and the platforming element, how it kind of like changed the degrees of like what plane you were playing on. You, you only, yeah, you only use one button, which is the A button. And all you mechanically do really is pick up these different spheres. But these different, there's like four spheres in the game, but they each confer a different ability. Oh. Uh, but if you place the sphere on like this plinth you can dive into it and there's like a separate world mm -hmm. and so it it sounds a little bit complicated the reality is it starts off really simple but then it teaches you a new thing and at every puzzle i was constantly like i'm not gonna be able to figure this out the only thing that could possibly work would be if i did Oh wait, that worked. That's it. And and I would always That's like felt that like portal feeling where it clicks and yes. you feel like a genius, but really it was the des game designer yeah. that did it. It's a sign. <laughs> I think you nailed it. It's like perfect game design because you feel like it's pushing you right to the edge, but I never to the point where I'm like, okay, I have to go to IGN. Yeah, or, mm -hmm. or we'll go to YouTube up, yeah. and look mm -hmm. this up. And so fantastic game, four hours, got lots of achievements, and so and it's in Game Pass. So yeah, play Cocoon. No excuses. It's None whatsoever. Me. No. <laughs> I need to play it. <laughs> It, it, you can you can beat it in a, yeah. in a weekend. Which I and love. I love having that kind of variety. I'm, I'm playing through Baldur's Gate 3, which is uh, the diametric opposite in terms of yeah, time I spent. Mean, in a short time game. Yeah, yeah just, a, just a little bit. It's a part-time job. Yeah, exactly. We were talking to our producer um, behind the scenes just before the show um, about how he's about 50 hours maybe more in and still only on Act 1. Um, but I love having the variety and options for a tighter, more curated experience. And Cocoon is made by a developer um, who used to work at Play Dead, uh, oh. who made Inside um, and Limbo, oh, and those are those kind of like games ever, games. Short, yeah, these like packages. short, concise, kind of tactile experiences, yeah. like muted storytelling, just kind of in the environment. Um, so I need to check that out. For yes, sure. you very much yeah. do. All right, so tell us, Baldur's Gate. Baldur's 3, Gate. 3. Where are you at in the game? as generically as possible. Yes, Who yes, no spoilers. Uh, yeah, well, um, we've talked a little bit about this before the show, too. Kind of attempted to romance everyone and then colossally messed up in, in a few other areas where I locked out, locked myself out of some oh. other romances. So that was unfortunate. But I'm... I hate to frame it this way, but I'm kind of stuck with Gail. It kind of worked <laughs> out that way. And only because everyone's so about Halcyon and Asterion, and I feel like... I haven't gotten down the path that everyone says is like the romance experience, but he's got perfect hair and a perfect beard, and yeah, you should be happy with what you have. I, you know what? He's very sweet, yeah. and like you shouldn't we're both... settle. Throw him in, let him die, <laughs> move on to a we're new person. We're both wizards. We can relate, you yeah. know. Like we have things in common. Exactly, we have things in common. To goods. Yeah, yeah and you know, all the. I mean, the interesting thing is like. All the characters, including yourself, are, are in dire straits. Like that's not much of a spoiler. Um, right at the top of the game, and um, and then each of your companions has like something that they're sort of struggling with. And I like the realness of that. So certainly, all of the characters are, are quite flawed in their own way, and all, all interesting in their own way. Bonding um, though through the experience. Yeah, that's yeah, cool. Exactly. Um, but I, my my joke to you guys was, was going to be: <laughs> Well, before the break, I was playing Act One of Baldur's Gate Three, and I'm now playing a completely different game, which is I've just finished Act. Two of Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> so it's just Baldur's Gate 3 for me all the way. I'm about 
50 hours in, I'm just approaching the actual gates of Baldur's Gate. Oh, I was going to say, I you didn't know that that was a thing. That's a thing, a thing yeah. It, it actually exists. It's actually a real the thing. Name in the name is a real no. thing, okay. yeah. Um, and it's, it's developing uh, in a really interesting way. Uh, we were all just kind of chatting about the different experiences that you can get. And all, of, all three of us at one moment were saying, like, wait. I didn't know that could even happen. Like, how did how did you manage that? And oh, I didn't realize that could happen. Wait, like, that different person emotions. could die, or that person didn't have to die, or there was or... a person entirely that you could have met that like yeah. leads to this whole other chapter, or like if you do these things out of this sequence or in this sequence. And I love that because it's not just the game that's the experience; it's the the friends you made along the way, uh, yeah. digitally, and also when you bond. The true with modern, your... like choose your own adventure. Yeah, that's great. yeah, exactly. Had you played a bunch of like CRPGs as they're referred to before? No, a huge RPG fan yeah. um, and also like long bio, long term Bioware player. So more so like not quite in this kind of category, but it's just it's very like easy to pick up on and the storytelling is so incredible and um, you it really clicks with you too. Like just the the different kind of elements of the gameplay that you can that you can really leverage, especially with Baldur's Gate 3, like historically with RPGs, I don't really use a ton of buffs and scrolls for, yeah. for that kind of strategy in battles. Yeah. I'm like, potions and my spells. Like, those are kind of my, my right and my left hands. Yeah. But um, Baldur's Gate 3 has, like, encouraged me to get a little bit more. I was going to say, what are you playing? <laughs> what's, your what's your, like, character? I am a sorcerer. Okay. Um, I'm an elf sorcerer. Okay. Um, so and... you are drinking potions, throwing fireballs. Yes, But yes. you're also reading scrolls. Well, yeah. So the scrolls are, like, kind of, because there's scrolls and there's potions. So, like, potions, I'm, which often overlap in a lot of ways. So oh. they're there's like scrolls of invisibility versus potions of invisibility. So you have your, your options in that sense. But potions, I mean mostly like, not that you have this option in Baldur's Gate 3, but like mana replenishing and health replenishing, yeah, yeah, yeah. your standard issue potions. Yeah. But the more like buff-centric, perk-centric stuff, I've never really dabbled with too much. But man, the combos that you can get to, and I'm high enough level now where I've got this wall of fire and I love just like hitting a level four spell <laughs> wall of fire and trapping all of my enemies in one place and then like laying down some other kind of glyph that they step on in another section where there's some other enemies and they explode themselves essentially. And it's a lot of interesting like compounding that's going on. Um, but we were also talking about like, what's your ideal party? Because this is another part of the Baldur's Gate 3 experience. And I just don't have choices. I don't have options mm. because I either did not meet or messed up the uh, side quest sequences to have them join my party or maybe got some people killed. So. I've got people just sitting in <laughs> camp and they're like, when are you going to call me? Yeah. And I'm like, mm. What's you could that be like? a little more polite, you know. <laughs> Next time, say please and maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah there's certain characters that really are uh, kind of gruff, and I'm like, you can be gruff here back at camp because I'm moving on with the it's fun true. people. Yeah. yeah, but it switches up the dialogue sometimes. It's yeah. interesting. Yeah, we're just like yeah. a nice group of people who yeah. like to bludgeon goblins. So, so who's who's your ideal party then? Not the gruff people. Well, uh, no so lies I'm, I'm in early act two, and I am a um, paladin. Uh, which I didn't realize kind of like locks you into a bit of a moral code mm. where it's like, oh, so occasionally like we can talk good, about, yeah. like, like sort of a lawfully good person. So like a, a lot of times, like you're sort of obligated to, you can't like look the other way. It's like, oh, this group is, is keeping these people hostage. I am obligated to free them. So I'm almost like a little too good for my own good. But if not, you actually get, if you do something that is like, you know, off the off base, you're actually visited by like a very angry uh, something that's like, uh, I'll see you tonight, buddy. Whoa. You know, and then I'm like, okay, Ominous. reload, reload. Yeah. You're like a higher power that comes down yeah, like that, a mom and is like, we got to talk. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. You're way off track wow. here, buddy. So, uh, so I'm in, yeah, Elfin, I've got like a kind of a pointy ear. So I'm embracing mm -hmm. all of that. But so I'm with uh, Carlock. Who is the fire lady, right? Fire lady, yep. and she's the she's the muscle and humorous Australian accent of the group. Uh, Shadow Heart, who's sort of the healer, and um, slowly I think I'm breaking the facade. You know, we, like we get it. You're a little goth, but you know, mm -hmm. and she a little more emo. Yes, but she's she's coming out. I, I don't want to like label people, but yeah, yeah. she she's 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 softening. I think That's a little fair. bit. And I'm then, translating the social that I see about yeah. these characters. Well, and then, they all and, come in with their like pre, you know preconceived notions yes. about right and, and wrong, yeah, and, and like, problems and issues. Exactly. And, okay. Yeah. But some and then people over are time, really angry, and then some yeah. people like the it's cultural like Gail, who you're you're really taking for granted. You know, is just <laughs> like nice from the, from <laughs> the get go. I know he's yeah. crying at home right now. Yeah. So I've got Gail, and I switched off with Wool, who's another Will, who's another. 
you know, pretty well-adjusted person considering the things that happened mm -hmm. to, to him. So I'm still pretty early. I think there's lots of other characters that I'll be able to experience, but I am not, I had never really played a CRPG or I, I had bounced off of them and, and you're right, you, it clicks with you and mm -hmm. then it's like, I could play this game forever. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It feels that way. But on the on the topic of saves coming, because you mentioned mm. like we gotta reload saves sometimes, yeah. I would just like to put out there that in some situations with some games, saves coming is totally okay. Yeah. It's totally reasonable. Your game, I, your journey. Yeah, well, you know, maybe for dialogue choices, if you really want to go down the path of like, I'm role playing, like these are the decisions yeah. I would have mm -hmm. made, let's just stick with them. Okay, you don't have to reload in that instance. Maybe you're cheating a little bit if you do, but everybody play how you want. But for Baldur's Gate 3, I might be, you know, wandering around and uh, pretending to be one of the whatever camp I'm infiltrating at that point and relying on my dialogue and my charisma and my persuasion roles and accidentally hit A in the wrong moment and pick something up and I've stolen things and now they're attacking me and that's totally Chaos okay. And Susie. Yeah, I was just exactly. At it. Yeah. yeah. Or I'll start a battle knowing that I've got probably three more encounters in an area where you can't fast travel to your camp for a long rest. So inevitably, I want the first few to go well enough to where I don't need to use any of my mm -hmm. health potions. And I will re-reload re on those moments, too, if I feel like I've ended a battle with There's far no too judgment for low health. Yeah. Uh, yes, and. Uh -oh. Yes, and. <laughs> There's no judgment for me. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, there's certain situations where I pick up the wrong thing or I didn't really understand the rules of engagement. And I'm like, oh, that's how this works. Okay, I will try this again yes. because it's going really bad. Where I think there's a line for me personally, mm -hmm. and again, maybe I'm manifesting my inner paladin, I don't, I don't reload for bad rolls. Like if I roll a mm. one and like sometimes oh, I'm just yeah. like, yeah. All right, that was the dice, I'm gonna yeah. let the dice yeah. do Well, the, the in-game feature lets you re-roll though. The, if you have yes, enough inspiration. Yes, of course, but I don't or, reload. Yeah. Yes, Because you save. can actually yeah. save, like literally when you're on the dice menu. Yes, you can. Yes, and, I do oh, love that. you can save, roll the dice, hate it, go back, load, yes. roll the dice. Again. You can save in the middle of a cutscene. Like you can save yeah. whenever, wow. which is incredible. Okay. Yeah. So. I thought this was just like, Maybe if you I, go down the right path, you cue the cutscene on you, like, oh, shit, I need to go look down the left path. Yeah, oh, for sure. But, like, you could re-roll every, and win every yeah. dice roll in the game yeah. if you really Okay, that's a, that. that's a little, eh. That's a bit much for me. But yeah. Anyway. Well, there's also some roles, not to get so, so deep into it, but there's some roles where Welcome it's like... Welcome to Baldur's Gate podcast, <laughs> the Baldur's, everyone. Official Live Baldur's from the Xbox podcast. podcast studio. Sorry. Indeed. No, it was it was a good setup. Um, yeah, like there's there's some roles where you got to hit 30, and I'm just like, okay, if I'm not if I'm not some kind of expert in, let's say it's it's persuasion, and I've got like, you know, my, my character spec'd out for that, I'm not even going to try, so it's not worth it. But occasionally... It's a sorcerer, you know, moment, and I should be able to hit my character class, and I don't. And then I will use the in-game feature to reroll. But th that's my that's, that's my But barometer. you have to earn those. You so, do, yes. You, you know, spend by, credits on them, essentially. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I, I, that's fair. That's yeah. Fair. It's all fair, I guess. Well, it's just how much what, what you would tell somebody else that you, you save scum on a roll. But. Yeah, it's true. But hey, you know, there are scenarios where it makes sense. It's totally appropriate. So I want to ask you, because yeah. your, your role, uh, so to speak, uh, in real life involves the Developer Direct, which was announced this week. And That's I want right. to talk about that. But yes. real, let's make sure we come back to, because mm -hmm. I want to come back and talk about Like a Dragon, because there was some news there. Yes. And I got to visit Sega uh, last month. But let's bunch of game news. But the, but, the, but, the, but the news of the week is the developer direct. Yeah. And you're the executive producer of this upcoming show. So, like... Tell us all the secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Honestly, I'm, I'm just, like, brimming and so excited for everyone uh, to, to be able to see this on, on January 18th at 12 p.m. Pacific time. Please tune in. Uh, but, yes, myself and Aaron Greenberg are co-EPs on the show. And it's developer... It's interesting because we have a lot of shows. Like, we mm -hmm. do, like, the June Showcase. You see us at Gamescom and Tokyo Game Show. Like, we've got a slightly different Part approach for... Yeah. yeah. Um, we've got a slightly different approach for um, some of these shows... And Developer Direct is pretty new. We launched it last year. And it's meant to just be a very, like, authentic, like, deep from inside the studios, like, literally filmed within the studios, presented by the developers themselves, just nerding out about their own games. Um, and... I personally like love working on the show because I get to travel out to the studios and meet the developers that are working on our oh, games that's really cool. and just hearing from them individually. And, you know, I come from a content background. So, of course, I'm going to be like, oh, maybe we can rephrase this or do we move this sentence around for flow purposes? But ultimately, it's a lot of just asking them, like, well, what is cool about this feature? And, like, how did you get there? And they've been living and breathing this for exactly. years, building and yeah. talking about these stories, these characters, these whatnots. Yes. 
And there's some really cute stories in there that I can't wait for people to hear. It's all very informative. Yeah. But there's a couple, like, there's just people's personalities coming out. And there's a couple moments where I have watched this show so many times because that's how production works. You're just watching the same segments over and over and, and making sure everything's very polished. So I've watched this thing so many times. And I will laugh every single time at one thing in particular. See if you can guess it, folks at home. Okay. Um, and then when we come back, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure to, to break that one out and mention it. But... Um, if you haven't heard, uh, Developer Direct um, next week, uh, as of the time of you watching this this podcast, and we, we go deep with um, Indiana Jones from Machine Games, Cannot which I think is really exciting. So yeah, I'm gonna marathon it this weekend just to get excited. Oh, that's a that's a good move, especially because it's been very rainy here. I love like rainy day. Love a good rainy movie. movie. Yeah, yep. absolutely, and that's a good one to do. So Indiana Jones finally gonna get and a uh, reveal of what the game is um, with 10 minutes of gameplay, which is just incredible. Um, so that's going to be very exciting. Um, we also chat with um, Obsidian develop Obsidian's developers over at Irvine. Um, they're going to talk a little bit more about Avowed. Um, very and, popular on social. A lot oh, of people so are glad. really excited to too. hear yeah. and see more about Avowed. Yeah, there's some real like Pillars of Eternity fans out there, which is very cool. Um, and it's, it's a classic kind of Obsidian experience, just like deep storytelling, gameplay that intersects with it. The same sort of things that we were talking about with Baldur's Gate in terms of like you're, you're getting to kind of see people's different takes on things. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's that kind of experience, an obsidian experience essentially. Um, Oxide working on Aura History Untold. Like I'm not even much of a strategy player myself, but wow, like I, it's, it's one of my favorite parts of the shows. Like I can't even say that because every part in its own way is my favorite, but I was just so delightfully surprised talking, like for someone who's not personally like proactively going out there seeking out these kinds of games, how enthralled I was, like just just hearing what they how have to say. How these people build these it. worlds, basically. Yeah, yeah. and like what they think, because they come from Civilization V background and yeah. expertise, so they've had a lot of time to think yeah. about like the grand strategy genre and like how do you like what features do they want to innovate on. So there's a lot of information in there about little things that they tweaked and made their own, so that it feels more living and breathing, but also like more functional for the player. Like give you some different options of how to play. So all that stuff's gonna be. Yeah, very, I, very I got cool. to play at Gamescom, which is already half a year ago because uh, we had it out for media and I think they, they do have a, a an insider program where they've got certain flights that people are, are have cool. been playing for quite some time so they're they're listening to fans but it is really cool to see the areas as people that have tremendous experience in those sort of 4x games like what are the things that they think are important How to they make build, yeah. exactly that's it's cool. like if we could make the, the game we wanted to make what would it yeah. be like and that's this game so I'm, I'm very curious to see what they'll be showing next week yeah, me too. No. <laughs> <laughs> I love you playing coy. Like, oh, yeah, can't exactly. wait. Seen it 50 times. <laughs> yeah, seen it 50 times. It's excellent. But it's so cool because they had such a great showing at Gamescom too at our booth. And I just, I heard from a lot of like my former press friends, current friends, former press coworkers, anyway, um, that they just, they, they, everybody like really loved the experience that they had there yeah. too, which was really fun because again, like strategy genre can be like you either like strategy games or you don't. But this felt so like much more accessible to people from what I've heard what I've personally seen. Um, and then, of course, we oh, also have oh. Hellblade 2, yeah. Senua's Saga, um, diving back in with, with Senua's Journey um, over at Ninja Theory. Uh, and it's just such a like interesting like shift in mood when you think about it, you know, like from all of the different... I love the diversity of the games that, that we work on. And with with Hellblade, it's this like really well crafted like incredible. I mean, we've seen recently at the Game Awards also like it's just heavy. It's heavy in like a really they showed up amazing way. well at the Game Awards. I yeah. love the performance they did, the flame, oh the God. fire, high the, like, long, yeah, incredible. That, like this throat yelling. It was yes. really. Cool. It was the first yes. time I'd seen that. Mm -hmm. That was really cool. But then of course the trailer, yeah. the footage that they showed, Absolutely. the gameplay. Everyone loved. It was phenomenal to see in person. And so I can't wait to hear more about I know. About and them. that was the really, really incredible thing about being in person. It's just the high lung performance in particular. And you can tell, like, wow, what a good fit for the game as well. Oh, perfect. It's just the, the tone, the vibe, and the, there's there's a lot more that they'll explain as well um, about this, the craft of bringing Hellblade together. And so that's the, that's the moments where you get to nerd out with developers and just hear about, like, why they made decisions that they do, like, what their philosophy is as a team. So that's developer-direct in a nutshell, both next week's, but also philosophically as a show, 
like that's just the opportunity for people to see like trailers, like a really well made trailer with a great track against it, like is so memorable. You know, I think about Mad World against Gears, like those 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 yeah. things that like really stick with you. But then having this opportunity for developers to just talk about their trade themselves and get a peek behind the curtain. So and a lot to speak. of this is coming off, if I'm wrong, the feedback from the first one because you were part of, weren't you part of yeah. helping put together the first one last yeah, year? Yeah. Wildly successful. Loved it. I yeah. would, I'd say on behalf of the community they absolutely loved it more over the moon yeah and i'm sure you guys looked at that read that absolutely. feedback and then yeah. when you went into production for this one that kind of exactly fed into yeah. It. yeah there was this sort of theory that you know as as people who enjoy games like we like hearing about them and how they're made from those people so it was a bit of a test of that theory mm -hmm. and yeah developer direct last year i think went well um it was really fun to put that together yeah selfishly Just incredible being modest, to work on smashing. this show <laughs> so i'm then, glad so after we'll have to show, smash that one now. <laughs> so and then after that, uh, the uh, there's Bethesda a whole team. other stream yes. after that too. So our friends at Zenimax are Zenimax Online, debuting yes. um, the kind of global reveal event. So it's the Elder Scrolls Online 2024 global reveal oh, like event. Like the next chapter. And it'll be the next oh. chapter. So this is their like um, this is a kind of historic thing for them. Like they put together this stream to talk about the next big chapter in the Elder Scrolls Online. Um, so there's tons of like here's here's this big update with all these features like new parts. Parts of the storyline, diving into like what the zone is going to be, what that experience is. So it's just going to be a big news day for us, which is really exciting. Um, on that note, nothing from our, our friends at Activision, Blizzard, or King. Um, just as an FYI, more to but, come later this year. Yeah, of course. There's, we've got we've got a whole. It's only January. We've yeah. got a whole year to talk Transparency about Transparency and hype. Yes, exactly. Yes, measured in both senses. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a big day, a fun day. I'm looking forward to it and, and hearing what everybody has to say and what you guys think of all the segments too. Well, and, yeah. and take so notes we won't every time. have a show next week because we, we normally are on Thursdays and Developer Direct is on Thursday. And I think yes, kind, that, kind of we're, we're giving enough. Kind of stuff. Pause the show. Yeah. Otherwise, we'll just be sitting there going like, you know, that that thing. Yeah, you know. yeah, exactly. So we, yeah, we we will talk about though the games that have come out last week. We'll touch on games that came out last week. Games that are coming out next week. Game Pass games, just because we want to make sure you all get your fill of the the news as well. So there's a bunch of um, games that came out last week that we can we can touch on. Um, one is uh, Stuffed. It's uh, have you guys? You stop me if you guys have heard of these games because I I looked at all the games to make sure I got the highlights for everyone. Um, I so don't know this game. Stuffed is it's a procedurally generated first person shooter. So you're basically um, playing as a little teddy bear in a little girl's dream. Um, it's funny because I was, I was reading like... it's an like, FPS. It's but, FPS, yes, <laughs> yes, But it's an exactly. FPS horror game. Well, okay, so oh, you're... Oh, no, it is an FPS. You're not kidding. It literally is uh, an FPS. Oh, you you don't want to upset joke. the snuggle bear. Oh, my yes. gosh. So, I mean, his weapons are this like... This is like Cabbage Patch versus your, like, stuffies. Kind of. So, because you have like little gnomes and little like evil looking rubber duckies come at you. Oh. Um, and then you as the teddy bear. So it's it's round, it's wave after wave, um, hence procedurally generated. And you're able to unlock, like as you're killing wave after wave, you're getting money and unlocking like new weapons. There's like a, God, I love video there's games. an RPG <laughs> equivalent oh, so of not an actual RPG. So your main weapon that you get, you have like a little twig that you can hit things with. That's like your <laughs> melee weapon. Nice. And then um, you have a cola can hand that powers what looks like a stapler gun with like rubber bands and then you can upgrade that to like a comic like comic book card. I really hope we and, have footage wow. of this playing yes, right it's, now. It's it's pretty <laughs> ridiculous. Um kind of like Toy Story esque, you know, because there's yeah. these like toys yeah. come alive. Yeah. Um, but you're using all these household like weapon item like modified items. Um I've heard a lot of people online uh say because people have been playing it, I've heard a lot of people say it's like Call of Duty zombies but for kids. <laughs> and I don't think you could describe it any ba better Baby's than that. first FPS. Baby's yes, exactly. First FPS. Baby's first FPS. Yes, uh, so it's got that balance of like very cute, very Toy Story, and then the evil rubber ducky eyes yeah. come at you, and it's you're like, concept. oh, it's a serious FPS, actually. Um, so that's stuffed. And then we have um, the, the theme of the week seems to be a lot of rogue lights and Metroidvanias. Okay. So this is one. Uh, it's called Trinity Fusion. It's set in like a multiverse kind of sci-fi setting. So like the multiverse is kind of crumbling apart, and you have to unify them to make sure that the world does not end in on itself. It's side-scrolling action game. Um, 
you've got like the part of that multiverse story is you've got two versions of yourself. Oh. And if you combine mm. the two versions, um, you have more of those abilities. So it's like playing a lot with that sci-fi multiverse setting as part of the That's story, rad, but also yeah. the gameplay. There was a game that Ubisoft had like maybe on the late 360 era or mm. early Xbox One. That sounds really familiar. Oh, with the two and it was like blue and red. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. was a really cool yeah. game. Now I got to look it up. Yeah, but. yeah. Remind me of the name because my memory is terrible. But uh, it's, it's interesting. It looks really fluid. There's like some really cool action moments um, in some of the footage that I've seen. You can like freeze enemies and use them as platforms. Oh, that's cool. Which is cool. Yeah. And there's a bunch of traps. It just looks, it all looks very smooth. How humiliating as a bad guy to come charging in and then he's just, you, yeah, you're just like you. frozen. You're now, you're now a stepping ladder. <laughs> you are now, yeah, exactly. You are now just the, the item that I used to get to the next platform <laughs> and forget about you completely. Um, and then a uh, final release from, from last week, I think it was, uh, is Rail Break. And the best way I can describe this, I've heard people describe it as like oh it looks very house of the dead it's like a oh. and i say this in a positive way because i love horror and i love all horror um but it's very like that cheesy b level horror kind of style oh, yeah yeah Both the, you know what i'm talking about like super campy like the like dialogue the, the visuals the 80s. yeah it's exactly. like that 80s, the 80s movie vibe yeah. What was the Ubisoft game? Outland. Outland, yes, Outland. yes, 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 yes. Well, hopefully, hopefully, we have it all long since put video in there. Outland was a great game. <laughs> you should definitely try it Producer's out. Producer's like, I got you. Yes. He's like, okay, fine. Oh, it was made by Housemark. Oh, okay, cool. There you yeah, go. it came out wow. in 2011. Um, well, we also have some new Game Pass games as well. So oh, that's a big day on I imagine. Game Pass today. Indeed. So, yes. a big, well, also from Ubisoft, like, do you have 100 hours? Because if so, <laughs> I have the game for you, and that is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Um, we've really much, uh, very much enjoyed a shorter Assassin's Creed yes. experience here in, in the past year with Mirage, but this sort of the, the really the apex of like their big full RPG where you take over Eivor, mm -hmm. you're literally taking over all of England yep. uh, and parts of Norway, the and, Raider and everybody. <laughs> yeah, uh, even going into <laughs> into uh, the mythical Valhalla. Uh, mm -hmm. I, li I like the mythical side of it a lot. Yeah. Like, kind of plays with some of the gods and the mythology. Yeah, quite but a bit. There's nothing more satisfying than like rolling up in your Viking boat with like dual axes. Jumping out, yes. everyone screaming, you're charging, you're pillaging, you know. Battering the doors do. down. Yeah, taking yeah. down the doors. And then the when you pillage too, you, you like have checkpoints. Mm -hmm. Some of the lands I love that you can like take the beach. Then once you take the beachhead, then you take over yep. like the civilian huts and then you take over the church. So it sounds bad when I say it out loud, but in the video game context, yes. it's a lot of it's a hell of a lot of fun. So very cool that uh, so that that's waiting for you if you haven't gotten there yet. Also Figment, which is a a, a game. Uh, it's really it's got it's an action adventure game, but it's really musical related mm -hmm. and uh, step on some piano keys. You know. Very like, surreal world. Yeah. So uh, probably worth checking out there. On the sports side, Super Mega Baseball 4 is out today. Uh, very much the... Hmm, it, 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 if, if MLB The Show is the sim and it gets every little detail right, Super Mega Baseball 4 is like, it's about having fun. Now, it has mm -hmm. real players and there is oh. actually a fair I amount of depth I love that, like a boot up an game. arcade experience. Yeah, mm -hmm. like I grew up with like RBI Baseball. Yeah. Like, that was my jam. And uh, obviously, games got much, much more serious and realistic since that point. But there's still that fun arcade experience. And well, anyway, that's here for you in Game Pass as well. And making a return... We Happy Few, yeah. taking yep. place in a 1960s drug-fueled, oh, yeah. Austin Powers went very wrong. And very uh, dark. And very yes. dark. And uh, World, World War II went very wrong and very dark. Yes, yes. from our friends at Compulsion Studios up yeah. in Quebec. Uh, and so uh, that was in Game Pass for a long time. And then, you know, these things happen. These it's things back. Happen. That's it's the important back. thing. So if you didn't get a chance to play it or beat it, uh, this is your chance to do it. And then looking ahead to next week. One more. One more Game Pass game. Oh, Very this important one. because Stein's been playing. Yes, this came out oh, last week. Right. Yes. 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 Let Let loose. Loose. Oh. yes. Okay, so if you ever have watched Band of the Brothers or if your Roman Empire is watching World War II documentaries or if you've ever enjoyed a Call of Duty, any kind of FPS like World War II game, I promise you, Hell Let Loose is waiting for you and your squad. Now, two advices. One, bring a group of friends. And if you don't have friends, open your mics up and have fun. This is a Friday night, 9 p.m. Like, let your, let your role-playing flag fly in this one. It is so much fun because I... <laughs> so I've, I've got, like, 100 hours in this between, like, PC and... Con like, just playing the hell out of this because this is... No pun intended. This has become, like, a regular rotation for me and my friends. And literally, Friday, 9 o'clock... My kids are going to bed. 
My wife's like reading on her Kindle in the other room quietly. And then she just hears me screaming, Medic! Medic! <laughs> I'm like down because you'll like go all comms mm. and it'll show you like how close a medic is. And it'll be like 40 meters, 30 meters, <laughs> 20 meters. And I'm like, Mom, I don't want to go home. I want to go home. And don't then, go into the light. And then he'll come up and he'll be like, I got you, son. And he'll like stick you with his like little adrenaline. Mm. They'll wrap you up and he'll be like, you know, some swearing, you know, yeah. get on the front line, you blah, 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 bleep, 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 and then you're like, okay, and then like this barrage, it's like a theater of war, this barrage will come in, it's called like a streak barrage, and this thing will like, and I swear to God, your gums rattle. When this thing goes off. How loud do you have your headphones up? So loud. <laughs> I have uh, the brand new A50s. I have them so loud as this thing's going off. And then this commander's yelling at you if you're mm -hmm. like the... Because you have different roles. You can be like a rifleman. You can be a medic. You can be an anti-tank. So like your commander will call mm -hmm. down and be like, We got an enemy panzer on the point. I need an anti-tank. So I'll go in. I'll respawn. I'll go anti-tank. I'll come in with like this bazooka. It's only got like two shots. And like he's like mowing people down he's got a machine gunner mm. this whole squad spawns they get wiped out as like the machine gunners raining fire and your captain scream which he, my friend like ethan screaming at me oh i thought this was like an npc <laughs> no no these are people you're, that, you're, you're, you're really role playing yeah, here you just you just gotta let yourself go i promise it is so much fun be embarrassed have some fun with it i'll let loose to some of the most fun i've ever had and just this is what it what it makes me excited to play games like Baldur's gate or like have a D, &D campaign because it helps me get into character where I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm just like screaming on the front lines and like some guys like buried his head in this foxhole and I'm like, get your head out of the dirt and push, push. I'm like, die and respawn, die and respawn. And we're just screaming at each other. And it's Are just going to be streaming this, man. It is so, I, I should. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's so much fun. Corinne, my wife gets so mad at me because I will scream at the top of my lungs as we're like, I'm like, a barrage is coming in and I'm like running and I'm like getting to the other side of the fence and then Ethan will be blown up next to me. His arm will hit me in my face and I'll be like, <laughs> no! And like we're just screaming. Uh, very sounds, animated. This sounds, okay. I think it's the purest way to experience how let loose is just to let yourself go right. and have so much fun with it. Otherwise, like it's fun. It's tactical. You pick a role and you can just pick a rifleman. Yeah. You don't have to get way into it. I would say start with a rifleman and then see where the yeah. adventure goes. Well, it's on Game Pass. You try it out. Yeah. It's you know? a lot of fun. Sorry to get really loud. Sorry no. for the sound guy. But <laughs> I think you woke up the kids upstairs. It's I, so much fun. And just, yeah, it's. I guarantee either turn your mic on so that way you can just kind of have that all group chat or just bring a couple friends with you and mm -hmm. have one hell of a good time. Yeah, right. my understanding it's this very high on the realism route. So yeah, oh yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like you get, 50 v 50. You get plinked in the head, you're done. Like yeah, it's not yeah. like a, oh, let me get down and put a rub a patch mm -hmm. on and right. get back into it. But you respawn pretty quickly. Um, you know, there's garrison, there's capture points, you know, as long as the team's kind of working together somewhat cohesively, you can have a pretty good pretty good yeah. show. I mean, sometimes people will just go rogue and everyone wants to be a sniper. Mm. It's like, yeah, that's not really how you that's can not, win. That's not that you can't fun. really win a game. Yeah. The thing I would also say is it's like real theaters of war. So it's pretty like, like there's a D-Day one where you rush a beach mm. and you defend a beach. Um, there's a Stalingrad one where I think it's Stalingrad, the average like lifespan of a soldier was 24 hours. And it feels that way in mm. when yeah, you play it's the Stalingrad. enemy at the gates. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that was... Uh, any yeah, any of those it. movies, it's basically that. Wow. But you got to let yourself have that experience. Yep. Yeah. And we've been getting a lot of uh, requests for Hell Let Loose on Game Pass. Yeah, so we've been seeing like a lot of momentous. people really excited today yes. about it, start to talk about it. I think the Hell Let Loose mm -hmm. developers were talking about, like, players are up. Oh, good. People are experiencing good. it. So that's what I love, you know, not to pander, but I do love <laughs> the thing about Game Pass is literally... It'll just breathe life into a game that has a great experience. Mm. You just got to introduce it to more people mm -hmm. so they can just jump in and play with it. And so I'm like really excited it came over to Game Pass. Very cool. Amazing. So it's not just the games that are directly into Game Pass this week. There's actually, as part of the benefits uh, that you get as a Game Pass member, something called Free Play Days. Uh, you may be aware of this. Sometimes a game just available from like... Thursday night through Sunday night, something like that, something for you to, to that try out. Try, yeah. yeah, and usually those games are also on sale. This week is a really big one. It is EA Sports Week. And so almost all of their EA Sports games are part of free play days. I'm just going to read them out. Mm -hmm. uh, EA Sports FC 24, that's the soccer one. Mm -hmm. EA Sports F1 23, EA Sports PGA Tour, and uh, NHL as well. There's, there's quite a few of them. And then um, I want to say that EA Sports FC 24 
you don't even have to be a uh, a Game Pass member and you'll be able to play that one. Basically, if you have oh, an Xbox, cool. you'll, you be able to, you'll be able to just download it and play it. And I mean, we're right in the middle of the European soccer season, so there's so much. MLS is getting ramped back up pretty soon here. So good time to, to jump back in there. But something else going on this week that's completely unrelated is it's CES this week. And um, a lot of stuff comes out of CES. It used to be a big gaming show like way back in the day. But there's still some gaming stuff, usually around PC gaming. There were a couple of really fun announcements this week. One is, and I love my handheld gaming uh, devices. I'm an Asus ROG them, Ally yeah. owner. Yeah. Um, I've gotten to spend a lot of time with the Lenovo Legion Go. Something that's caught my eye is the MSI Claw, oh. which seems to have taken... Um, it just seems each one that comes out looks at the one that came out before and goes, well, what if we tweak this? What if we tweak this? <laughs> so uh, I've definitely got my my mind on uh, it. It's, got, it's living up here rent-free, especially because it has more battery, more milliamps of battery power inside it than any of the existing uh, oh, systems. Cool. So, I think also the screen was a little different too. Screen, uh, I think the screen is very similar to the, uh, okay. to the ROG Ally. It's a 1080p, uh, I want to say it goes up to 120 hertz. So I think oh, it's wow. relatively okay. nice. similar. Um, and uh, it's 16 gigs of RAM. So I think relatively similar, it does have a an Intel chip. So the first one of these, most of them have had um, AMD chips. So obviously people will do all the benchmarking yeah. and all that stuff. But pick, looking, pick your poison, pick your preference. Exactly, mm -hmm. but looking at the you know the battery life, it's like, ooh, that could be really good. So I'll be keeping an eye on that one and maybe we even get to try one out. The other thing that was really interesting, Hyperkin, if that name is familiar to you, they brought back the Duke several years ago, back in like 2018, give or, give or take. But they're going back to the well and the Xbox, OG Xbox Controller S, yeah. which is what replaced the Duke uh, yeah, yeah. in that original the OG took his Xbox. his first diet. This is the one that Exactly, came out. shrunk down, uh, moved some of the buttons around a little bit. Well, they just announced they're going to be remaking that. Date, pricing, all those stuff still yet to be announced, but they had some pictures. I saw it on Polygon. Look really cool. So I think we'll enough people that. love the OG Duke launching that clearly they had they had a good vibe there from the community to tap into like well let's let's go deeper into this exactly. So we'll we'll try that out. It looks, that out it looks can, great. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that was a that was my first Xbox controller, so it has a a good uh, a spot in the heart here for me. Yeah. Awesome. Well, on that note, we have a couple other games to talk about as well because we're actually not going to have a podcast next week, as uh, Jeff mentioned earlier. So why not talk about the games that are coming out next wow. week? Um, there's two on our list uh, that we've been looking at. Um, Prince of Persia, The Lost Crown, that was uh, announced in June of last year. I have to remember that 2023 was last year. <laughs> um, it's interesting. It's Prince of Persia as a 2D platformer, essentially. You're not playing as the prince. You're playing as Sargon, who's this immortal. You're actually trying to play. Um, go and save um, the, the go rescue the the prince of Persia who's been stuck between time and dimensions because of course time and dimensions are always a always a feature um, another like kind of Metroidvania ish like experience but they have a really interesting new feature which I think is very cool that all future games should probably look at adopting um, as you're going back and forth on the map which is that you know classic experience um, and you're you're running into roadblocks because you don't have the abilities or what might whatever it might be that allows you to progress in that one particular area area, you can take a screenshot of it oh. and attach it onto the map, which for someone who can be so forgetful uh. as I've progressed into a whole other area, smart, and now I'm like yeah. in this mentality, in this level with these yeah. enemies, just being able to go back and get that visual reference is so, so, so helpful. Or I imagine it will be. I haven't played it yet. Um, a bunch of people out there on the press side have played it. Um, it's been getting like really great early impressions too. So seems like one to keep an eye on, especially when you consider the development Developers of Rayman Legends are working oh. on this. This seems like a good feature. How many times have you like taken taking your phone out and yes. taken a picture of the I screen? I have yes. absolutely done that. When it's like yep. a combination lock code. Oh yeah. And I was like, yep. okay, hold on, I gotta. We're go doing to that in Alan Wake too. I'm yeah. like, is this is a fox or a wolf. The code stashes. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, 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 is mm -hmm. it triangle left, triangle yep. right? Yep. I just yep. took pictures. That was of them. absolutely yep. the last game I was taking those pictures <laughs> of. Yep. It's it's in my we camera all roll. We all did that. That's great. Exactly. Yeah. But now you got it in the game. How nice. How convenient. That's great. Yeah. Um, Cult of the Lamb. Another one. Also has. Has a pretty cool update, Sins of the Flesh, mm. which is a great. I love their. That sounds right on, right on, and it's brand, right <laughs> on brand for what it is. Uh, you get to love uh, some some of your followers, your loyal followers. They also worked on like XP grind for it. So like when you had to do things like clean up people's barf and poop and kind of the area, you now get a little bit more XP for it. You should get all the XP for yes. that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> clearly, yeah. But you also get a, you know, uh, they've got like a mating tent in it now, uh, which also. So you get an egg, 
it, you can also just crack the egg and have a yolk. You don't have to let it grow up and oh. do a follower, so it really leans in on like... But you need the followers. Well, if you have a lot of followers, but you need the eggs, right. you might want the eggs yeah. instead. Mm. So they really, what, a, what a quandary. Yeah, really lead you down the path <laughs> of like dark choice one or dark choice two. But Cold <laughs> Man, I believe that update's going to be free for people. All right, all right. So... One of the things we always like to do here. Oh, we can talk about real quickly. Game oh. Pass, of course. There's more games yes, coming out next more, week. Yes, even more games. That's Since right. We won't be here. Yeah. Yes. yes. There's um, Resident Evil Two, which if you this is the the remake from must play. 2018. It's it's a must play. Absolutely. So this is your chance if you haven't yet because yeah. it's on Game Pass. Um, we'll as be well checking as, homework. Yeah, exactly. Make sure you finish it. Um, as well as those who remain. Have either of you guys played those who remain? Mm -hmm. No. Oh, I have not either. But we'll have now to we back. now exactly now the three of us. Can now play. we have homework. Now Janet. <laughs> All right. Yes, um, but exciting things coming up uh, next week and into the future. Um, and on that note, I think we can talk about just into the future overall, 2024, what we're looking forward to. Yeah. Uh, so um, we like to, you know, so we're getting into, this is Thursday. It's, it's some call it Little Friday. Yep. I've heard it referred to as such. Thursday night's always, a, you know, it's effectively, you're almost there. You're almost to the weekend. And we like to celebrate Friday with Free Code Friday. And we're always thinking like, well, what, what's that thing that's really top of mind that we can ask you out in, in the listening sphere? <laughs> uh, we all listen in a sphere. Don't look, we're getting started. I'm just getting, I We're just waking up. Yet. We're yeah. still in holiday I don't know what mode. year it is, exactly. for God's sake. Um, <laughs> And sort of just looking forward to 2024, like 2023 coming off an amazing year for, for games to play. What are you looking forward to for 2024? And I'll, I'll just lead off while you think a little and bit. why is it like a dragon? <laughs> well, it's 100%. <laughs> so, I, well, I was looking at, and I was listening to Cam Hawkins, who was guesting on uh, the Spawn on Me podcast, which is, wow. you should absolutely listen to the Spawn on Me podcast because it's really good. Khalif yeah. Adams, fantastic human. And uh, Cam was talking about this is like an amazing year for like turn-based RPGs just that have been announced that are coming this year. And uh, the first one that we'll be playing is Yakuza Like a Dragon. I actually went down to Sega and I got to play it last month. Um, an amazing reproduction of Hawaii. Like I was talking about going to the real life camera road show. Like you've, if you've been to Honolulu, you have been to like the, the area that is featured in, in uh, Infinite Wealth. Like there was the point where I'm like, Am I in the Alamoana Mall? And I was like, yeah, no, I am. I'm, this is where I'm at. And it's really cool to, uh, this game has so much. I got to play a little bit of Honolulu, which really captures some, some you know, great feeling of Hawaii. Like even the ABC stores are in it. Like, oh, that's ever, cool. You know, where you, oh, I ran out of suntan lotion yeah. and booze. Well, guess what? There's one place that has both of those things for you. It's an ABC store. <laughs> um, and I need a hat. Also got you covered. But then we played other parts of it. We played... Uh, we went to Dondoku Island, mm -hmm. which is like uh, a whole like life sim builder, like within quite a tonal shift from the uh, rest yeah, of the game. I'm sure it was <laughs> so much fun cleaning up the island and capturing animals and everything. So a little Animal Crossing, or maybe a lot of Animal Crossing in your your Yakuza Like a Dragon experience. I got to enjoy that, and then um, something we haven't seen quite as much of is going back to Yokohama, where a group of folks was with Kiryu chalking off his bucket list. So he's dying in this game. Oh. And mm -hmm. and you're realizing as Kiryu, like how little you've done in life besides, you know, constantly fighting. You've actually done Ooh. a lot of, you've boxed a, a tiger. Of you've done a lot of January. stuff. Yeah, but so you actually like go to a batting cage and you're like doing all these That's things cool. that you can do and like sort of having a, a fun time with a group of characters as well. So this game is gonna have so much diversity to it. That's mm -hmm. out in about two weeks. We'll be talking a heck of a lot more about it. but. The, an early an early lead for like what I'm looking forward to in terms of, of game of the year, but there's a, just a ton of other RPGs that are coming. Like um, Ayuden Chronicle, mm -hmm. uh, 100 Heroes yep. is coming out. Um, we've got actually just a week after uh, Like a Dragon, we're going to get to have Persona 3 Reload. That's right. Which I've gotten to play a little bit of and I'll be able to talk about next week. So uh, just, it's going to be an amazing, like for RPG fans, yet another great year. So that's what I'm looking forward to. What about you, Stan? Um, as you were talking there, I had to think about what's what's, what's out. coming out. Yeah, what's <laughs> what's what's discussed. Um, the the most immediate one, probably on my horizon, uh, horizon, and not to cop out, but it's going to be Hellblade. Like I feel like that's the the next one I'm ready to play. I'm ready to experience. I'm ready to see where Senua goes on her mm -hmm. journey. And so I really love the first one. I enjoyed it a lot. That the combat was kind of fun, and yeah. now we got a bit of dabble of that. 
from the Game Awards. And I'm with you. Like Hellblade is, of course, very top of mind. Obviously, so is Avowed. You know, both are are in developer direct coming up soon, but also like games for this year. So we get to actually get our hands on the controllers yeah, soon. I'm ready. Um, I have Like a Dragon and um, Avowed and Hellblade on my list, but also Star Wars Outlaws. Mm. We um, debuted the right. the trailer for that in Showcase last year. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, Hades 2 is, gonna, is supposed to release this year as well. So I think that's probably on a lot of people's 2024 list, if I had to guess. Yeah, that's right up there. All right, well, we want to know what's on your list. And that is the Free Code Friday question of the week. So when you see the tweet go up on twitter.com slash Xbox Wire, the at is TikTok. Yeah, at TikTok. Yeah, it, it, yeah we'll it works. That way. You take When you see that go up there, just <laughs> let us know what you're looking forward to here in 2024. We will pick five winners, and each of those five winners will win multiple of those EA Sports games, such as EA Sports FC 24, NHL 24. We've got a couple other ones, so you'll get a, a bevy of codes for those of you who answer this question correctly. Awesome. And that's everything we have for the very first episode of the year. Thanks for bearing with us in our cloudy, hazy holiday, mm, foggy uh, brain. Um, Warm up round podcast. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, hopefully everyone else is on the same track as well. And other than that, we will see you not next week, but the following week. Yeah, see you then. Hi, everybody.